So first of all, I, I would like I, I will go through a through a few points. Mainly, I think that it's very important to to show all the work that we have been doing on the ecosystem during these three years. Um, but it's also important to to show a bit of a comparative that we have been thinking about. And and many times we are, I think that we are quite exigent with with what we want to do. Um, but it's also quite challenging. So it's, it's mainly um, to put a bit of relaxing part on on this first item and after that to go to, to what is the AI for you platform and how we build that using the ecosystem. So um, does anybody know what these numbers are? Simple question. <laughs> so no, 27, 46, 45, 23, no? Any guess? Roy? Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan, no. No, no, it's not, well, but that's a, that's a good point. So um, this is the amount of years that the GAFA technology companies have been working. So 27 years for Amazon that started in 1994, 1975 for Microsoft, 16, um, sorry, 1976 for Apple and 1998. So it's a matter of time. It's a matter of three things. To, to, to be there is a matter of three things. It's a matter of time, persistence. So that's what these companies have been doing during all this time, persistence. So working, working and working. Um, it's a matter of services. It's a matter of services from the perspective of they have been um, delivering these services. They started from a very, very, very rudimentary version. Um, actually, Google started with two bars, two search bars. Uh, one was for Stanford, Stanford Search. So it started in a university as researchers. And the second one is, is search on the web. And after that, they evolved. So in 46 years, um, they have, of course, 200 and 90 something services they have uh 60 90 60 something services uh another one so they have tons of them but of course they started from somewhere so and it's the strength of the community so the third part is is very 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 important to have the support of the community the community at large so stakeholders that are um from industry that are from researchers that are from everybody and everybody's cooperating with them and Actually, very simple, if you think in Google, if you think in Amazon, if you think in, in Apple or Microsoft, they have people that is following them, people that is supporting, people that is helping. So that's what we have been building here. So three, that's simpler now, right? So this is AI for you. So we started three years ago. We started with 80 partners. We started with a lot of effort, with a lot of illusion. Um, we continue with that. Eh? So uh, the, main, the main point that we have to understand is that it's a starting point. And it's a starting point, but we have a few things that are different to, to the GAFA technology companies that are mainly, um, and I'm not going to enter into detail here because you will see the talk tomorrow um, by Joaquin Kohler, the technical coordinator at 9, uh, 9.30, I think. But this is mainly um, our main strength. So our main strength is that we have more AI research than any other country in the world. So we are all together in Europe. If we cooperate, if we work as we have been doing in AI4U, we can make this happen. We can build this. So AI is a technology per se that is going to be leading the, in the business market. And actually, there is a point there that is quite good, that is two of three CEOs believe that AI will influence their businesses. So the most important is to move this ahead. But there is one point that is clear. There is no AI without research, mathematics, researchers, but also without the support of industry. So how are we going, how, how more or less are we doing this? So yeah, that's the talk, just in case, uh, from Joaquin Kola. So how are we doing this? We're moving towards the ecosystem. So the main idea that you see there, the, the little tiny robots, is to build this ecosystem or this arena where we can transfer, we can deliver, we can use research, and it can be used, it can be easily adopted, easily um, used and, and delivered, etc., by, by innovations, SMEs, innovators, mid-caps, investors, startups, etc. So we spin everything around a, an AI platform, but the AI platform is, is even more than that. So we, every time that we talk about the platform, is about the seed, that is the portal, and a set of services that has been built around. So how this works in, in reality. So in reality, we have the European Commission has been putting this plan. So it's not only A for you. So A for you was the seed. But there is a set of projects that is working around. Actually, this slide is quite interesting, probably. But, um, and I, I decided to choose it. That is an iteration of the original one because it also shows all the interaction with the digital innovation hubs. So during the last times, we have been working with digital innovation hubs with, with a set of people that are experts on, on DIHs and EDIHs also to 
understand and to have a better understanding on how AI for you can be supported by DIHs and EDHs in the future and the other way around. But if we think in terms of, of a reduced vision, so I, I want to go a bit more, more um, reduced there, I would say that if we see the, the main red square, that is the, the ICTs 48 and 49, those are mainly um, research and innovation. So if we make this a bit, a bit bigger, what we can see here is that we have an area that is the research part, so it's 12 million projects each with between 30 to, um, to 50 uh, partners each that are meant to create research, are meant to, de to, to deliver AI tools, AI assets, that are usable and exploitable in different topics, human-centric AI, machine learning, in multimedia, and in, in trustworthy AI that is quite key for the commission and for the successful of, of all the ecosystem of trust in Europe to create and populate AI for you. But not only that, we have the ACTs 49 that are additional services that are meant to be complementing this, this picture, and we have a set of innovation that are SMEs, industry, European initiatives, but also developers, etc., to make use of all of this. So if we make a exploited view of, of the innovation, we have been cooperating with, se with several projects in different areas, and we are, we are continue exploring the different areas that can be extended. We already are working with six projects in manufacturing, the ICT38. We are with energy, with um, um, earth observation, with AI plan for you, that is for planning, AI for media, etc. And you will see a bit of, of this later in the, in the talk after this one, actually, that you will see all the services um, presented um, next. So, what has been the, the platform that we have there? So I think that it's important to think in, in these three years. So um, our coordinator, Patrick Gatteri, was talking about two platforms. I think that is, is uh, interesting to show a bit of the vision of, of this to, to don't confuse about the two platforms. So initially, we started from, a, from an initial development, like all the GAFAs that I was mentioning before, um, we evolved. So we started from a centralized perspective. The centralized perspective, after one year and a half, we decided to evolve to a new distributed environment where we have the support of many other projects also to make them participants of this platform that is a European platform and is for everybody to use. So in this process, um, mainly the next steps, uh, well, what we deliver in this process was um, two, main, two main parts. We deliver a portal that is um, what we can see here, we call the CMS, you can see that on top, and we deliver a second part that is the, the AI for experiments that is mainly an, an environment that allows the, the, the companies, the etc., to test um, AI for um, to make use or create models or create even hybrid pipelines. So, in this path from centralized to distributed, one of the things that um, um, our coordinator was mentioning as well is that we will extend this vision. So this vision, that is a cooperative vision, is not only for AI for you. So it's to be extended, it's to be incorporating the other projects. So it's to be incorporating uh, not only projects, but also we have people from companies that are, are involved and are, are delivering assets, uh, that are delivering uh, new services, that are engaging with uh, technical governance board, and that, that, are, that want to contribute and want to participate in this AI on demand platform and ecosystem that is, is happening right now in Europe. So during the next years, it will be founded a set of more projects that will be extended this view but also it will be um, extending the services and extending the community, but the most important part is, is to complete that, that view of the community. So um, I want to give a, a bit light touch on this because I think that is very important, but also from the perspective of, of the, the AI for experiments, that, that part that has been mainly led um, by two people, um, Martin Wells and, and um, Peter Schuller, you will see that tomorrow at 11.30. And also the part of the CMS, you will see that also tomorrow um, at 11.30 by Alessandro Safiotti and Jonas Pitas that will present that in detail. But I think that there are a couple of things that are interesting to, to mention here. One of them is that this is one of the services. As I mentioned, is the service for testing. Um, you, can, you can create the models, uh, you can download it, but it's interesting to mention how an SME, for example, could, could go through this process. So it's as simple as, as going to the marketplace using the design studio. Um, in that design studio, um, they, can, they can onboard new models, they can use the models, they can deploy them locally, or they can use a cloud. Actually, some of the, of the current projects that are working in different areas, they are connecting the, the European Grid Initiative, EGI, all the clouds that they have there from European Open Science Cloud, and they are, and, and it will be extended through, uh, through other projects towards, towards um, supporting European clouds to make the deployments of these models. So the main, the main simply workflow is, is just to go there, 
um, to, to create a pipeline using the, the studio and to make the deployments and, and to publish them. So it's, it's super simple. You will see that tomorrow anyway. But it's almost plug and play. So um, what's the part of the portal? I think that the part of the portal that is also interesting to mention is supported by these seven, um, these seven main key aspects, these, these um, content types. These content types are mainly AI bundles, so they are different uh, the AI software mainly to be used, and uh, different TRLs. You have news event events, you have courses, pilots, uh, case studies, etc. But the main idea behind this is that um, one of the, th the main things that we did is we explore how this could be exploited by SMEs and by industry. So we analyze this in this set of arrows that is from problem fit, building teams, business idea model, business planning, and scaling strategy that is going from the, the most basic and fundamental idea from a company up to a point where an SME could scale up the strategy that they are doing or could scale up the the ideas that they are having uh, to make that market re ready in, in the market to be, to be used and to be exploited. So all the assets you can see, I'm not going to enter into all the details, but you have there, for example, the fundamental research, you have partnership and matchmaking in building teams that is coming from another project that is Starway, the scaling strategy funding opportunities that Roy will mention that after me. So you have there more or less all the different parts, all the different components that you can use in the, in the portal to build your strategy around your SME. So I'm not going to enter here, Roy, I think that you, you will mention this uh, just next, but just to recap, I think that it's very important to think that um, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time if we were together. Um, if we were in, in three years, mainly here, um, where could we be in 10 years? So it's very important to think in a vision that the AI on demand platform will have in 10 years, cooperating among us in areas like, for example, energy, in areas like, for example, manufacturing, or in areas like, for example, healthcare. So we have to think that in 10 years, if we continue working as we have been working with the community, cooperating with the associations, the European associations that are uh, clear with ELIS, with URI, et cetera, where can we be um, working together? So thank you very much. Um, this has been more or less my presentation. If you have any question, um, I'm happy to take it. If not, hand over. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay, so uh, two years ago we were in Athens in, in another AI for You event uh, organized by Democritus. We have here also Vangelis. There uh, we were talking about the AI opportunities for startups and SMEs with three Greek startups and with Manolis uh, from the University of Athens. And uh, one of the questions from Manolis was what, what are the main challenges for startups and SMEs to adopt AI? And we were talking about three main uh, points, right? right? Data, skills, and funding. Data, skills, and funding. And today I, I'm going to focus on the third one. And let me start with um, the presentation of the, some of the main uh, result, uh, yeah, insights from the State of European Tech report uh, released by Atomico just two days ago. So it's really fresh. It was pre presented uh, late last Tuesday. And uh, on regards to funding, there are really, really, really interesting insights. First of all, this year, in 2021, uh, European companies have raised $121 billion, you know? This is 10 times the amount that was uh, raised by European companies just uh, 10 years ago, uh, sorry, seven years ago, when Atomico released the first version of this uh, report. Uh, also, 33% of, uh, of the investment raised in rounds above $5 million uh, is um, uh, was raised by European companies. Uh, you know, uh, this is a huge uh, a step forward for Europe because European companies were really, really, really struggling uh, to 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 close the bigger rounds, the rounds that can let them to become unicorns, right? And today in Europe we have 98 unicorns. Just some years ago you could have all the unicorns in a table just uh, uh, having dinner together, and today we have 98 unicorns. So. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, data um, brings us to a um, uh, state of optimism, right? And in fact, as part of the report, that the report uh, has been done gathering data from many sources, but also qualitative data from 5,000 5, people interviewed, uh, these people was asked, uh, are you more optimistic today than you were 
uh, 12 months ago about the future of European tech, and 75%, 75%, more than double than the people that said yes one year ago, said yes. But this optimism is not only in the in, in the people uh, and so on, it's also in institutions. And here we have uh, one of the inputs from Maria Gabriel, the European Commission uh, for Innovation, Research, uh, Culture, Education and Youth, that, you know, she says that she is also very optimistic about uh, Europe uh, becoming the global powerhouse for startups and, and innovation. And this optimism is based on data and on future prospects, okay? But what that the company said, uh, Nicolas Julia says that there's never been a better time to become an entrepreneur in Europe. Okay, uh, well, the data, uh, reading the data, uh, you, you can extract uh, this conclusion and it's really nice to have also these qualitative inputs from the companies. But after this introduction uh, with this uh, report that I really encourage you to, to read because it's really, really interesting, uh, I would like to go to, uh, okay, funding opportunities for startups and SMEs in research and development programs. And, Let's do. Let's start doing a comparison on uh, what was it in Horizon 2020 and in Horizon Europe. Horizon 2020, as you know, uh, was a pro the the main R&D program in Europe that went from 2014 to 2020 with a total budget of around 75 billion uh, euros. And uh, here I wanted to highlight two of the main instruments uh, addressed to startups and SMEs. The EIC Accelerator. The EIC Accelerator is an instrument in which the European Commission is distributing between half a million and 2.5 million euros in the form of a grant to startups and SMEs that can be complemented with private funding of up to uh, 50 million uh, euros. Uh, and, um, in uh, Horizon 2020, the total budget of this instrument was 3 billion euros and is more than will be more than in Horizon Europe, 10 billion euros. And then we have the FSTP, or the Financial Support to Startup, projects in which the European Commission and the consortium, and part of the money of this consortium is di distributed uh, mainly to startups and SMEs. Again, the budget from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe has uh, been uh, tripled. So we are talking of going from 5% of the budget to uh, in instruments almost uh, focus 100% in SMEs and startups to going to 13% of the budget. Obviously, the step forward that was done in Horizon 2020 affected to the results that we have seen in the State of European Tech uh, report, and this step forward in Horizon Europe will also uh, contribute uh, to this. And, uh, you know, how this money will be distributed? It will be distributed in many verticals and sectors. Of course, AI is one of them, but also in blockchain, in IoT, uh, in, in ener energy applications, health, etc. And um, in terms of AI, the European Commission announced as part of the uh, European Commission AI strategy that they will invest at least 1 billion euros uh, in, in AI as part of the Horizon Europe and um, Digital Europe programs, and that they expect that this 1 billion euros per year will be multiplied by 20 uh, with the investment from the member states and uh, coming from the private uh, companies. So we are talking about a 7 billion euros of investment in the coming seven years that will be, will be, will be multiplied to get to 140 billion euros of total investment in AI. And, uh, in which programs, okay? Uh, because there are many programs. Here I don't want to do a comprehensive list of all the programs that are tackling AI in, well, that tack tackle AI in Horizon uh, 2020 and that will tackle in Horizon Europe, but just wanted to include uh, some examples. Like, for example, I4MS, ICT for Manufacturing SMEs. This is an initiative that uh, has been uh, around for many years. Uh, um, in Horizon 2020, the main aim was to support manufacturing companies in their digital transformation, okay? And AI was one of the components, but now the call for Horizon Europe has been already published, and the call ho in Horizon Europe will be focused in three main um, technologies, AI, cybersecure, IoT, and uh, robotics. We also have the robotics initiative. In the robotics initiative, maybe we can uh, mention the digit, um, digitizing European industry initiative, or uh, we can mention the, the networks of digital innovations hubs in robotics, where 
um, that are fostering the adoption of, of, uh, of robotics and, uh, and AI, computer vision and so on by uh, manufacturing companies. Other initiatives like Next Generation Internet, uh, like uh, EASME, that uh, part of EASME is the EIC Accelerator Program, is part of EASME, like are, for example, the NOSUP uh, programs that are supporting SMEs, or uh, like are the, the COSME program that are supporting SMEs in, in the financing and so on, the digital innovation hubs and so on. So, you know, there are many initiatives tackling AI, and of course, there is also a for you that in the initiative that uh, bring us here, and that is an initiative, an initiative that is 100% focused uh, in AI. And so, let me now show a bit the, the results of the open calls in, in A4U. In A4U, we, as uh, many of you might, might, might know, we have two calls, one call, uh, um, one challenge call addressed to source challenges from the industry. In this call, uh, we, we received almost 300 uh, started applications, 80 submitted applications to select just 13 challenges. It was much, much more above uh, our expectations. And then uh, we launched a solutions call to address uh, those uh, challenges. In this case, we received around uh, 600 started applications, 150 submitted to select 41 uh, solutions. In this case, I have to say that the results are a bit lower than we expected, but it's true that the challenges were so, so specific that, uh, yeah. In, um, in terms of, um, of uh, the results, you know, we received applications from 31 countries, uh, Spain and Germany were around 11%, but uh, from many other countries, one to 3% of the applications, 80% of the applications were from uh, startups and SMEs. And finally, the beneficiaries came from 16 different uh, countries. And uh, all those companies went uh, through a support program. Uh, Three million euros were distributed uh, between the solution providers in, in, in tickets of 70K and the uh, challenge owners in tickets of 10K. They also received mentoring, technical and business, and also uh, support uh, and access to the AA4U platform. And what is more, more important, last week, all those solutions were published in the AA4U platform. And, uh, in the next months, uh, there will be uh, some of them will be for sure uh, replicable and so on. Today, uh, we have, uh, after me, Ina is presenting one of those solutions. And in a session this afternoon, we will have another three solutions uh, that are part of the success stories campaign of, of, of A4U, where uh, well, we are disseminating the results, not only online, but also in events like in SLAS or here today. And you know, those are numbers, but let me share with you, and this is the first time that we release it, a video where we are showing a short, in a couple of minutes, a short summary of what happened in this program. Need help to develop and fund your AI solution? Join the European AI On Demand platform, a one-stop shop to lower barriers to innovation, to boost technology transfer, and catalyze the growth of startups and SMEs in all sectors through direct funding and other actions. The AI4EU program has distributed with a six-month support program to 54 stakeholders, 13 challenge projects, and 41 solution providers. The financial help of AI4EU we were able to assign a dedicated team to help us improve the technology readiness level of some of our software modules. But specifically, we were able to test and validate some of the core concepts based on a real-world clinical challenge. AI for EU financial and support program gives us an opportunity to develop services based on deep learning models that can predict with high accuracy diagnosis from clinical texts in Spanish and can be adapted for other European languages. The A4U platform has expanded our target. It allowed us to discover new customers as well as potential partners. Communication with our mentors has provided valuable feedback to improve our technical and also commercial approach. The A4EU platform has allowed us to experiment with different artificial intelligence and deep learning solutions in an intuitive way and completely scalable for our requirements. It is a platform with, with an enormous potential that will surely be useful in future products. Develop and fund your AI solution. Get financial support, training, mentoring and network with your AI peers. 
Okay. And this is only the beginning. You know, there are more projects that have already started. We have the ICT 49 project, uh, six projects that uh, are uh, will focus in supporting low tech SMEs uh, in adopting AI. Some of them already have uh, calls open, like uh, AI Plan for EU, DIH for AI, and, and AI Energy. They have the calls open, uh, DIH for AI, until the end of uh, December, the others until January. And, and February, and we also have two of those projects, Stairway and Bonsabs, that they have two calls continuously open, looking for uh, HPC providers and looking for AI talents. Uh, and uh, we, there are also some other projects that already launched calls this year, like AI for Copernicus, that closed three three different calls this year, and we launch new calls uh, next year. Also, um, Elise uh, project, one of the network of excellence of the ICT48 project that closed a very, very successful call this year with 400 uh, applications submitted and 16 really interesting uh, uh, beneficiaries in this call. And, you know, Stairway uh, will launch the first call for SMEs in January next year. Bonsas will launch the, the, the first call for SMEs uh, Q2 next year. And i media another ICT48 closed the first call uh, this year, and uh, it, it is to, to be announced when the next call uh, will be. So the future is really, really, really promising. Uh, we started the talk uh, talking about challenges, about data, skills, funding. And, you know, uh, I would like to close the, the call with this, uh, uh, with this amazing quote from Nicolas Julia. There's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur in Europe, okay? If you want to get more information, you can go to aiforeurope.eu. Uh, there uh, we are including the different funding opportunities. Uh, we will be here. I'm here today with my two colleagues, Isa and Ula. They are also part of Stairway, Bonsabs. And, uh, and Elise project and I energy. So if you want to know about, more about this or about any of those projects, you can just catch up us uh, during these days. Thank you. After me is coming Ina. Ina is from uh, Cinex. Cinex is one of the beneficiaries of the of the AFRE program. They are part of the success stories, and uh, she will present what they do at Cinex. I'm Ina. I come uh, at Cinex. So a bit of introduction. Who are we? We are a startup based in Belgium, and uh, we have been delivering services on technical consulting for business process automation since 2007, embarked on our first AI project in 2015, and now we are transitioning towards being a full AI technical product company. So why decision intelligence? It's because CNEXT is passionate about innovation, but we also have at our core value to serve people. Um, we believe in a future where machine and AI are not to replace human beings, but they work together to help people do their work better in their everyday life within the framework of trustworthiness, sustainability, ethics. And so, so with that in mind, we started, um, we saw a lot of potential for that symbiosis between human and AI in the context of healthcare. And there was an open call in February 2021 for which we applied. And so our journey with the AIs for Support, Europe Support Program started in June and concluded successfully in three phases um, just recently. So, what firstly is decision intelligence? It is a discipline that brings together traditional as well as advanced disciplines like big data together to design, um, automate, and uh, optimize decisions. And we saw a lot of potential for that in the healthcare. So first, a bit of context about decision intelligence. We know that decisions are something which is not done one time. At times, people have to do it uh, multiple times in their everyday life, and it's not a linear process. It can be quite complex with different factors involved in it, and it's not static, it's dynamic. So it needs to iterate and improve over time and also adapt to the changing context. So I will not go into all of the detail, but very briefly over these different steps that needs to iterate. To optimize decision, first step, as you can see on the loop on the left, is aware to first know what is your problem statement, what is the decision for which you require support. And once you know that, you bring in the different points from the business problem, your objectives, into a decision design and a journey. You model that into an AI model. 
But at the same time, you need to be aware of the limitations of your data, of your model. Um, is your model fair enough? What is the trustworthiness level? Is it explainable? And keeping that in mind, then you deploy your solution. We uh, all know now about the benefits of uh, Docker containers. Uh, you run them, but at the same time, it needs to be auditable. It needs to be traceable. You need to uh, trace the impact of the decisions, support that has been provided. And on that, then there is a feedback which can be given uh, by the human expertise as well, as well as the insights that you get from the data. So getting that feedback, you can then improve your model and design to optimize your decisions that aligns the trade-off between all of your objectives and ultimately for your business goals. So we, with our platform, we use uh, something which we call decision bricks as the building blocks. These are AI models or any reusable components that are used to come together, build up a logic of decision, which we call a decision map. And in order to execute that decision logic, you need a technical framework, which we call as an execution engine. And uh, we support it both on cloud and on premise as well. So firstly, why decision intelligence can be a solution in clinical workflows? Uh, we know that with the exponential boom of clinical data over the last years, there is also a lot of a challenge of noisy data. So all of the data might not be relevant for you to be used. At the same time, we know that human beings inherently have this property of cognitive biases. And that is where we see a perfect fit for decision intelligence where human and AI so a very simple example, for example, if a doctor has to um, see the patient and recommend them a different treatments or steps and tests for diagnosis, um, there is a lot of variation over there. You can see on the left side in the diagram, like expected is like you, the doctor can suggest five tests, but at times on average, it can go from four to seven and it can go as high as 12. This is where the challenge for the doctor or the clinical decision maker lies, that they have to provide the quality care. They don't want to overlook any steps during the treatment, but at the same time, they don't want to advise something which is unnecessary and would bear unnecessary operational costs. So how do we balance this trade-off uh, for different objectives that are to be met while to make those decisions? And that is where we see decision intelligence can combine the insights from data, from AI, as well as human expertise from the doctors to come up with best decisions that would serve the patient as well as serve the objectives of the hospitals or the clinical settings. On the left side, so when we started working on this project, um, we got a chance to talk directly to the people who are involved in these decisions, to the doctors, to the staff, of the hospital and uh, you can see that from symptoms to the one circled in red is the decision. Um, this is not a one st step process and there are multiple steps where a doctor has to see what kind of treatment or test needs to be suggested. And here on the bullets, you can see that there are different objectives which are to be met, but to make a decision that meets all of them is challenging and hence this is where we can help with AI. So clinical decision support enhances medical decision with clinical knowledge. That is the knowledge from the human experts, patient information, and other health information. So using this context, uh, we worked with uh, on AI for Europe support program with CHVL, a hospital in Liège, Belgium. And the case was that helped the doctor to uh, decide if the patient has COVID or not. And if they have COVID, what is the severity of their symptoms? And based on that, make a decision, should they be referred to ICU or should they be sent back to home? So we tested our concepts about that. We combined decision logic it can, for complex decisions or the idea is that our platform can support as complex decision as it can be because we can have different components or AI models that can be uh, designed. Um, we can use any kind of machine learning or AI algorithms, any published solution on AI for your platform, or if you have expertise in clinical AI models, we are also list, uh, open to hearing interesting ideas and looking for collaborations. And it's not a one-time uh, process, like once the decision support is provided, 
The decision maker can also simulate over the results and see what is the impact of different factors which is involved in the decision. And then once you uh, deploy your decisions, you can also retrain them and optimize them over time. So um, a bit of um, a small demo about what we did in the rectangles. You can see these are the decisions in the ovals. These are the inputs like fever, tiredness, and different age groups. So first, the doctor has to see has COVID or not, as classifying it one as COVID, zero as not, not COVID. And once that has been decided, if the person has COVID, what is the severity based on if they have fever or not? What is their age group? And the end, the last step is deter to determine the next step. So these are the decision bricks, the AI models, the inputs. We can make it as complex as it we want. We can change the rules over here to see the impact of uh, on the decision. You can add other decision models, knowledge component, decision tables, or bricks to design any complex decision logic. You can run the simulator, so a CD scan of the lung from which a doctor, from which from the data we see that it has COVID and it classifies it as one. Having COVID or not determines severity. It's not severe, it's severe, but person has COVID, so send them to quarantine instead of sending them to ICU. You can simulate over the different factors and see how it impacts the result. So this has been useful for the uh, clinical decision maker as well. So if you have COVID and it's a severe case, take them to ICU instead of quarantine. So how did CNEXT benefit from this program? Um, financially as well, we had a, a support of 70K, which was uh, delivered to us in three phases. And besides that, also the non-financial support uh, part of it, we published our solution on AI for Europe uh, platform. We had a lot of support and regular bi-weekly online mentoring sessions to make sure that we remained on track um, and also visibility through AI for Europe digital channels. The challenge owner, CHUL, they acknowledged potential platform and we are still talking to them to see future opportunities. We are looking for new synergies in healthcare. So if you have expertise in clinical AI models or have published solution in AI, we can design them into a decision logic and can run it on our platform. We are also aiming for new years, for next year uh, support programs. We got more ideas through this program and we are aiming for high to test some new concepts next year as well. So we had a successful full completion of the programs. The technology readiness levels went up from four to six, and also we are further coordinating with CSUL. Um, if you have any questions, um, any interesting ideas, you have my email, my phone number. Also in the networking dinner tonight, you're most welcome to share. Thank you.